Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. Right off the bat, let's just get on with it and let's show you something amazing to start with. If we go to the camera here, I've got a live feed sh showing this setup. So what we've got here, let's just go back to this camera here. Oh, you can see it in here. So I've got three lights uh, just around this set at the moment. And you can see this product doesn't look very good. The lighting on it isn't very exciting. This is a very expensive um, Swiss watch that I've borrowed from our friends at Ray and Scott. And when I put this light cone in, it's going to diffuse the light in such a way and the camera is going to see through that hole and it's going to do this. So let me just bring this in and in we go. And all of a sudden the lighting on that watch has now transformed. So if I take that away again, that's what it looked like without it with no lighting. Well, sorry, just normal lights, but no diffusion material. We put it back in again, and then we get this beautiful rendition of these lovely gradients of light. And we can control these gradients of light by moving the light source around. So you can see how we can bring that lighting in. We can move the position of the gradient. We can pull it further away if we want to soften it. We can make it harder if we go in closer. And of course, if you're using studio lights or speed lights, then you can adjust the power on the lights. Or as we're using LEDs here today, you can adjust the power on the LED. So if we go back to the main one, if I turn the power of that light down, you see that light there changing on that side just because I'm adjusting the power of that LED. So you have this ability to control not only the position, but obviously the power of your light, and it's the uh, effect of the cone that is doing this beautiful diffusion. Now, why is that? How do we go from that to that? Let me explain a little bit on the basic physics of this. So what V Flat World and I created here is a very special material that acts as an excellent diffuser. So it's got really good optical density properties. It diffuses the light in a very special way that gives really good gradients. And it's akin to the type of professional lighting that I apply in my product photography. Let me just show you here on my uh, desktop. So for those of you who don't know uh, who I am. This is uh, my commercial work and I do a lot of commercial product photography. And when you do commercial product photography, your objective is to make the product look really, really nice. And we use uh, something called gradient lighting to do that, to get these beautiful, lovely, soft gradients of light at particular places on the product. And that gradient lighting comes from something called scrim lighting with gradients so that that lovely graduated catch light on the uh, chrome metal there, for example, that's all controlled using gradient lighting. Now, we have to use these very, very big uh, scrim panels to do that in the studio environment. Huge uh, scrim panels, like, you know, 10 feet long by four feet wide. And that's not really suitable for most people that are doing small product photography at home or in a small studio. So, I identified what the major problems are for most small products with people. And the major problems are this. That is that you get all these nasty reflections and black parts of the uh, product. So, you know, you put a different product and then you get all these horrible reflections from the surrounding area. So what happens is the light cone comes in and it blocks all of the reflections from your surrounding room and your studio and then you put your light source through it and it gradates that light in a beautiful way to give these lovely soft gradients, very similar to the sort of lighting that I apply in my product photography in a professional way. The material is heat resistant. So even with hot modeling lamps on your studio lights, this will stand up to it. I mean, you can't put a burning hot modeling lamp next to it for a long period of time, but it is heat resistant. They pop her together at the front here so you can keep it flat if you want it flat in your studio or you can leave it assembled and as I mentioned we've got three different sizes. We've got a medium size one for smaller products or where you need to get your lens maybe your macro lens closer to jewellery. For me though the large size is my favourite it's the most versatile it's the one that um, I use pretty much for everything. And then we've also got a version for iPhone users. So those that are just taking pictures of small products, 
for a shopping website or you know Shopify, Etsy, that type of thing. You can use your iPhone, you can put your speed lights or your LED lighting through this and you can do video or take shots on your iPhone as well. So that's the iPhone version. Now, now I don't want to I don't want to completely interrupt you, but I do, Carl. So Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> going to do it. Now, you know, one of the things that pops into my head is when you think about sort of shooting jewelry or you're shooting, you know, product photography, especially if you go into our store or you talk with a lot of people, they're always pushing you towards sort of these light tents, light boxes. Yes. Now, now you're bringing in this cone and, and I, I mean, just from seeing it, you could tell it's, it's doing a way better job. I mean, what's the idea behind that? How is it able to do it and, and really show it in such a better light than where when you ha you put it into a light tent, you get such harsh, harsh lighting. And well, that's the really thing. Absolutely. You, you make a very good point there, Scott, because the, the problem with a light tent is it's made of a fabric material generally. And the fabric material, because of the weaving of the fabric, and this is why we don't use fabric, fabric scrims in professional product photography, because the actual weave of the fabric can create a gradient pattern that turns into like a starlight, or you know, when you look through the fabric, it's a little bit like a shower curtain, that the light from behind it turns into a starburst because of the weave of the fabric. This is completely different. This is made of a plastic material that's been textured and uh, the optical density, the thickness of the milkiness of the material has been set in a certain way that it reproduces the gradient that you get from professional scrim materials such as Lee 400 Lux or Lee 216. And it took us a long time to get the optical density properties of this material right to do that. A lot of testing with V-flat World and the product uh, design. And then finally, we, we got this product. So absolutely right, a light tent does the same thing in that it surrounds the product, but it ends up surrounding it just in a white box without really good control of the gradients. And because it's a box, it's got corners, it's not seamless. So it doesn't really work in the same way. This only has one seam and that's where you popper it together. And you can rotate this around at different angles so you can hide the seam. But then the rest of the 360 lighting, if you like, is seamless and that way you can create your gradients as necessary. And then as I demonstrated, by moving the light closer or further away, you can control the hotspot of the gradient to make it a softer gradient or a harder gradient. And if you don't mind, I'm just gonna demo that one more time because I think it's really important that your viewers see that. So right now we've got that, as you can see it there, you've got some hot spots from these lights here, the sort of hot spots you get when you have like a point light source or a speed light. And although that's lit, and the exposure is about right, it's not satisfying lighting. But as soon as we put the light cone in, we turn that into satisfying lighting. And then of course we have the ability to continue to move our lights around, change the position of the hotspot and give it more of a luxurious desirable look. And that's the thing with gradient lighting. It's about creating something that's a bit more luxurious and desirable. Now, one of the comments we get a lot, Scott, is about the fact that sometimes the diffusion material is so effective at diffusion that it ends up making the product maybe look a little bit matte. So we have some uh, tips and tricks for that as well, and it just involves some simple black card, as you can see here. Black card or black tape. So if we go back to that, watch what happens to, as I bring the black card in, we could create the gloss stripe again at various parts of the product. You can see it on the rim of the uh, bezel there. If I wrap it around here, you can see that gloss black line coming in or on the gold as well. So just by utilizing black card in key places, you can bring it in. And another way we do it as well is just to take a light cone and put black tape on it. So you put black tape on it in particular places and I'll take this light cone out that doesn't have any on, and I'll put this light cone in, and this one with a few predetermined bits of black tape, and we've already got black stripes now appearing on the metal work where the watch strap attaches to the watch. You can see the black lines, you can see the gloss line, and you can manipulate that gloss look back again with some black tape or black card. The other trick you can do 
is to just simply lift the light cone a little bit as well, because then that lets the black area from under the light cone down here, which is effectively an area of no light now, that reveals itself as a black line on the product. So you can mix and match these things a little bit, whether you want full diffusion or whether you want um, a black line and just doing it with electrical tape um, is the easiest way uh, to do it or to do it with simply a couple of pieces of black card like I'm doing here. So I put a black line in here, I put a black line down there, or I can bring, bring in another black line around the other side. So you can start to create gloss black, uh, gloss look lines in your product if you need them as well. Is so that Carl, all clear? I, very, very clear. I do wanna, I do just wanna let you know, I know you mentioned the electrical tape. We're trying to sell gaff tape over here, Carl. So, you know, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, gaffer tape, <laughs> gaffer tape works as well. Although I will be honest with you, gaffer tape's a bit sticky. Yes. Um, because it, 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 it adheres, adheres a bit too strongly. It will work, but it's harder to get it off and you might have to clean it. Electrical tape just peels off easier and you can get the wide rolls of electrical tape as well. But as I said, I think the easiest solution is actually just to hold some pieces of black card up against the light cone um, and use it do, it, do it that way. And then you can, with your product shot, what often happens with product photography is that you might try and light part of the product one way, take that shot, then light another, move a light, take another part. So you can do the same with this. You can take your base shot with the lovely gradients, then you can hold the black card in and take another shot and then put the black card in another position for maybe a bit of the gold strap or whatever. And then you take those three files, layer them into Photoshop and blend through the bits that you want. So it's relatively easy. But as you can see here, I mean, we got, we got a live feed in right now. This is, this is live, so you're seeing what, what my lighting is doing live. And if I go around to this side and I say, for example, move this light, you'll see how I can change the look of that light just by repositioning that light that I'm doing now. So you can see the effect it's having through the diffusion material. And you can see if I raise the height up, obviously I can make it come more across the glass of the light. I can move it around, you know, so you've got a, a lot of versatility um, in terms of what you can do. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still photography. You can't just put this thing in and go, hey, there we go. You have to move your lights around. You have to decide, right, I'm gonna move that light in a little bit. I'm gonna move that one out. I'm gonna move it up. So you still need to use lighting, but that lighting can be uh, LED lights like this. It can be the small little tiny LED lights, the battery ones. It can be um, even desk lamps. Um, we've done it some some demos before with desk lamps. Um, speed lights work as well, but a little bit more difficult if they haven't got modeling lamps, but you can still use speed lights. Or you can use big normal studio lights, you know, like your, your Bron Color or your Elinchrom or Godox or whatever. You can use all of those lights as well in exactly the same way. Um, so it's really about controlling that light with this 360 wraparound. Are you ready for another demo? I can demo a couple more products for you. Definitely ready for another demo. While while you while you switch into that mode, I will ask you because I'm I think I'm an overthinker. Maybe maybe it's just the New York cynicism in me that does it to me. But this seems so so. <laughs> I don't mean to down. So it. simple. It seems so simple. Yeah, exactly. It seems so simple. It seems like why why did you know. You always go, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, well, that's, isn't that often the case with some of the best and most effective products? Is It is a simple idea. And you know, this thing, I, I've been using this technique for over a decade. I've been a commercial product photographer for 25 years, and I've been using this te technique of a light cone for over a decade. And what I used to do was I used to have a clear acetate sheet that I cut into a cone shape, and then I put diffusion paper on top of it to stop it um, collapsing because without the acetate sheet, it would collapse because it wasn't rigid enough. And I was doing this for years, or as pr all product photographers do, using big scrims and piece of card and mirrors. And then I just thought when I was photographing this jewelry one day, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if this cone could be more of a permanent structure, a permanent thing? And I was talking to the guys at V-Flat World and I said, hey, look, I've got an idea for a product that probably fits well into your catalog because it's a lighting modifier. And I said, you know, are you interested in developing it with me? And they said, yes. And literally the last two, nearly two years, we've been working on bringing this thing to market and testing different permutations of it. 
And as you say, yeah, it's a simple idea, but sometimes the simplest ideas can be the most effective. And what I really love about this product is how effective it is. You know, you go from like that, which is like, just looks terrible to me. And it, within a second of putting that in, you just transform it immediately. And, and it's that simplicity that we love about this product. It is that easy to use. It's a simple product. You know, V-Flat World have also tried to make it uh, less expensive. There's the three pack option, which I believe has been a bestseller with you guys at B&H. You can buy the different sizes individually as well. So, you know, they, they, I just think it's a great, it, it's a solution, you know, it's a solution. It, it solves people's problems. I definitely agree. So I'm going to let you get set up on that on that second that second shot, and I'm just going to let you know I'm probably going to buy one of these and just walk around with it on my face because it does such a good <laughs> job on the watch. Exactly. Well, I'm just going to. You know, we've we've had a lot of comments about this looking like a a, a, co a collar, you know, for uh, pets and stuff, and it's interesting because it does look a little bit like that. And people are saying, oh, well, I can just use a pet collar. And the thing is, when we were doing the prototypes and the testing, we actually did look at some pet collars, but the material is the wrong material. It doesn't diffuse the light properly. And, um, you know, there are other products that have been mentioned as well from lampshades and various things, but none of them are either the right size or do they diffuse the product, uh, diffuse the lighting in the right way. So, you know, what we've developed here, we think is an easy cost-effective solution that at least does it in the right way. Okay, right, we're gonna, we're gonna move on to um, another product. So I'm gonna take this watch out of here and we're gonna take something uh, like these glasses. So here's another sort of tricky product to photograph. You see that big highlight from uh, one of the lights in there? I'm not sure which light that one is. That one there, you can see my hand in front of it catching on there. Um, and it, it, it doesn't look very attractive as it is at the moment. Now, if I bring the light cone in, we'll transform the look of the lighting now to something that's a lot more luxurious. You can see the lovely contours of the way that light is a gradient now in that plastic and that material. You can see how we've completely transformed it. I'm just moving that light around there. And you can see how I can change the specularity by bringing the light closer or moving the light further away. And of course, we can also change the intensity by turning the power of the light up and down. And then the same with this light here. I'm gonna, you might have to take that picture in picture out one second, because I'm just gonna bring this one into position. Where is it? No, it's not there. Uh, uh, there it is there. So you can see how, I, uh, I don't know if you can get the picture in picture back again or not there. Yeah, so I'm moving that light around and you can see how it's affecting the plastic on the glasses and the lenses, creating this more luxurious look. And if I just go over to the other, light as well and we'll just see here let's have a look at what this one position of this one it's on the wrong side this one yeah because the light is from mainly from the other side the angle that the glasses are tilting but if we take that light cone away again now let's just go back to the full picture let me just bring that gradient light into here and if we take that away again it looks like that it, it, you know that's what we were de dealing with with having three lights shining at the product and then we bring the light cone back in again and we transform it to that. And then there's the seam you can see in the glass, so you just rotate it. So if the seam is a problem for you, you just rotate it. So that, that's another simple and easy demo. I'm gonna bring in another product now. This one's just um, a flat, uh, what, what are these? Uh, what are these called? <laughs> Apple Watch, that's it. I forgot, I forgot the name. Now. Um, Again, let me just move this light. This is the great thing with this, right? Is you can see the sort of scrappy lighting look that you get from this. You get these hard blobs of light, which are great if you want to create that specularity high gloss look. But I'm going to give you a high gloss look with this in a second with the light cone. And then if we take this light, you can see that that light is that one creating that line there and it all looks a bit scrappy. So I take the light cone, I bring it in, and all of a sudden we've got lovely gradient light in those corners, but now I can control that light. Look at that beautiful gradient and how I can move that sheen over and around into different positions. I'm gonna move this one in a little bit. This one's set a little bit bright by the looks of it to me, so I'm just going to turn the exposure on that light down a little bit. 
Then I'm going to go around to my main light on this side. And there we go. I can bring that to create a gradient across the face of the product like so, or I can take it up to the top corner. So let's say that I want to light that like that or like that there. And then we'll just put that highlight on there. Now, again, the argument is, oh, that maybe you've made it look too matte in places. But again, you can bring in your gloss black stripe by just holding a piece of black card in. And as soon as you take one edge of the gradient away, then it creates the more of a gloss look. And I can do that over on various sides of the product. So you just basically play around with it, mess about with your pieces of black card. So you can see without that black card there or bringing that black card in to get that lovely gloss line look that we've got on the edge of it. And then as I said, without this, without light cone, that's what you've got. So I think you can all agree from a before and after point of view, that makes a huge difference to the way the lighting uh, looks in there. How do you activate these watches? Do they come on when you, oh, there we go. So there's a combination, if you like, of with the screen on, the gradient, and a lovely gloss edge look by using a bit of card in there. And without it, then it's, it looks like that. It looks a complete mess. So I think that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, before and after as well. Definitely. Now, I did, I did go ahead for anybody who's interested and wants to check out the product. I did drop a link into the section below. So if you're here on Zoom into the chat section, otherwise we'll have it in the comment section. Uh, this way you guys can go and check it out. Um, Carl's name is on there, which is cool. You've made it, Carl. That's it. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you one or two more products, if that's okay. 100%. Because a lot... A a lot of people have this sort of stuff. They're doing their own, um, you know, they may be making their own jewelry or their own Etsy store or Shopify and they're making their own products. A lot of crafts people, artisans doing their stuff is this sort of stuff. And they might have their own online store and they're trying to sell these products that they're making and they struggle with their photography um, because product photography is a complicated thing, it, it, you know. And what we've tried to do here is make it so much easier and simpler. So I'm going to demo this thing because this is more like the type of thing that a lot of people would be uh, trying to photograph if they're running their own store. So let me just place this down here because obviously this is going to look pretty terrible as it is at the moment. But I'm just going to place that there. So that's what it looks like as is. I'm going to pick up the light cone. I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to try and squeeze it in here. Now I haven't got the lighting in the right position for this particular product, so I'll have to move that around. But already, just in doing that, you can see how that lighting has changed. And now I move my light around and you can see how I can catch lovely gradient facets on that, on, sorry, on the facets on that particular product by just positioning the light in a given place. Or if I move this light around, we can see how I can catch a different part of the product. And then if I go to the other light, we can see whether we pick up a different uh, part, there we go there, so we can bring in a little bit of sparkle like so. And of course, I haven't adjusted the exposure yet on any of the lights, but I could go in and adjust the exposure on the camera or you know, darken the exposure to suit. And if you're using studio lights, then you'd just be adjusting the power or the power on your speed lights. And as it is with these LEDs, of course, we can adjust the power on the LED lighting as well. So even for these sort of small things that people make themselves craft store type stuff. Um, it can work really well. I've got a ring here. This is a gold ring. I've borrowed this from, um, I borrowed this from our friends at the jewelry store. They, they kindly lent me that lovely watch as well. So this has still got a label on it. I'm just gonna see if I can find the right position. Let me just get that. I've got a bit of tack there just to hold it in place. Uh, wrong way there, so let's just, uh, what, on the other setting? Yeah, do you want, is that just on the menu button here? Menu, uh, we're gonna go, just gonna get this a little bit closer on the framing here. Right, now, I'm actually, I'm gonna give that a clean first because I've got a few fingerprints on this. So it's a gold ring with some diamonds on the middle part of it. Just gonna stick it on the table, let me find my, correct position for it about here somewhere. Now you can see this is a typical thing that happens with shiny jewellery is that you, most of it ends up looking black because it's 
it's just reflecting the no light studio area or your room around you. And what I'm going to do is by bringing the light cone in, I'll be able to change that completely. So now it's all gold, you see? So all of a sudden, it's gold. Now the argument is, of course, well, maybe it looks too matte now. So I'm just going to adjust my exposure a little bit there as well. Maybe it looks too matte in places, but again, we can bring in black gloss lines by holding a piece of card in. So I'm just holding a piece of card in a given position and we can modify how the light looks. You can bring in a couple of pieces of card. So, you know, obviously we need to change the exposure if I do that because obviously I'm darkening the shot by bringing in that black card and obscuring some of the light. But we can change the look and it's certainly a much more favorable look than, than that there. So, you know, it does take still a little bit of work. You've got to, you've got to use this product uh, to, to its advantage. You've got to work with it in a certain way. Here's another example. We've got this pearl necklace here. I'm going to bring that in there. Let me just get that sort of roughly. Now, it's okay. The exposure is a little bit bright there, so I'm just going to darken that down. It's okay, but it's not amazing like that. I bring the light cone in and we transform that uh, diffusion material and then we can play around with how we diffuse the lights and the distance of the lights and it will change the look and that lovely gradient glow of the product. So you've got a lot of options and a lot of versatility and I've got three lights here. I'm using three lights, but actually two lights is, is often plenty. Um, we've done this demo with this shower head a few times. I don't know if this is going to fit in, but the, sh the shower head is a really good example because it's a spherical um, item. I'm just going to go back in to get a slightly wider view here. Sorry, because we're doing this on the live video feed rather than stills. We need a little bit of tack. Oh no, it's going to be much too close with this. I'm going to have to change lens. So what I'm going to do, I've been using a 90 mil macro lens at the moment. So I'm just going to change lens in a second. I'm going to just put that in there. So I'm going to take this lens off and swap that over with a slightly wider lens. Let's put this lens on. I've just been shooting on a Sony camera here with the macro lens. Uh, let's just see, Ben, what have we got on there? Oh, it's miles away, so we're going to zoom. All right, which one's it got to go to? The other one, the file format, the HD one. Is that it there? Right, and then we've got to zoom out a little bit on this one. Change the position of this. So you can see how terrible this shower head looks as it is at the moment. Let me just actually bring it in over this way here a little bit. I'm going to get it in focus. So, so you can see all the lines and light and everything shining off of there. That's in focus. We get the light cone and then we bring that light cone in and we can transform that immediately. The exposure's out there, but I darken that down to about there. You can see how we transform the lighting look. So that's from that to that by using the diffusion material. Now, the argument like we had with some of the other ones is that maybe we make it, that makes it look too matte finish when it's a gloss finished product. But again, you just bring in some black card in key places to make some black lines. Um, it's just a question of figuring out where you need to position the card. So you could put one on the stem there, like so, or I could come around the other side and you can bring in one just for the edge here. So you can start to manipulate the, the, the lighting look just by using black card. The other tip that we've got with the light cone as well is just lift it slightly. If you want to bring some black edges in, lift the light cone, and then you get some black lines appear where the light is not diffusing anymore because there is no light then coming from that position under the edge of the uh, light cone because we've lifted it off the ground. So there's a number of opportunities to create different lighting looks, even just by lifting the light cone off of the ground. And you can obviously see that huge transformation that we saw there. And the big light cone allows you to shoot sort of medium-sized products up to a small toaster or a hairdryer or 
you know, a, a tap, the electronics and that sort of stuff. Um, but I find the big light cone the best one all round because you can still get your lens down inside it. So even if you do a macro work like I was doing with the, uh, with the Swiss watch, your macro lens still fits inside it and allows you to get uh, close enough as you can see there. So Scott, I think that is about the demos done. And um, I don't know if you've got anyone who's got any questions or if you've got any questions, but hopefully, hopefully that, um, that showed some great before and afters. Definitely was. It was great to see in real time. So people were able to see that you're not, you're not a sorcerer. You're just a photographer. <laughs> so, sometimes people confuse us, but that's great to know uh, that you're seeing it live. Uh, we did get a question in from Vimeo. Uh, Marty is joining and was asking in terms of LED lights, uh, what type of LED lights do you recommend for something like product photography? Um, well, there's so much on the market now, and I'm sure B&H um, stock plenty of, uh, of, of different ones. The ones I'm using here are the Broncolor LED F160s, which have a really good, what, what you need to know with LED lighting is it's got to have a good color index, a good CRI number. So anything that's sort of 95 and over is going to give you a good full spectrum or at least close to full spectrum. 100 is as good as it can get. That's like natural daylight um, or studio flash. So anything over 95 is what I'd look out for in LED lighting. Some of the, uh, some, some of the brands like Broncolor do really good um, high CRI, like 98 or something. That's the main thing you've got to watch out. And then some of them also allow you to switch from daylight to warm tungsten balance as well. Um, so those are, those, those are the main key considerations is a good CRI. Excellent. And then I, th I think that this, this sounds like an obvious question, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway, because I think I might be surprised and other people will as well. When it comes to pro product photography, what do you consider to be the most important thing to keep in mind? Um, I would say it is making sure the product looks desirable. Um, at the end of the day, product photography is about selling products. It's about um, people wanting to buy the product. So, you know, we've got these, ex this very expensive Swiss watch here. We've got, you know, uh, 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 an Apple watch here as well. And as you saw, when the Apple watch was just lying there under three spotlights, it didn't look much at all. When you see it in Apple's advertising, it's got that beautiful gradient lighting and lovely colors and everything else. And that's what we did with it in this demo. It's, so it's making something look desirable um, by smoothing things out, making things look less bitty and less distracting. And if you're photographing products in a more um, uh, studio environment where you're like working with a set, then obviously the light cone wouldn't be suitable because you know, you're talking about a whole set and other stuff going on. But one of my key things that I always say uh, as well to my students on Carl Taylor Education is how to make sure that the set or the supporting cast doesn't overpower the hero. You've always got a hero in the shot, which is the thing that should be desirable. And then you've got a supporting cast. That might be a plain background. It might be a textured background. It might be a whole elaborate set, but they've got to work well together and the product has to remain the hero and feel desirable. Awesome. And, and for those of you interested, because, I, uh, because Carl so wonderfully pointed out at the beginning of this that I shoved my foot in my mouth uh, by talking about V-flats instead of the light cone. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Um, no problem. <laughs> anytime. Uh, you know, if you well, do it, is, it is confusing. It is confusing because <laughs> they are called, they're called V-flat world. But obviously, yes. um, their V-flats, so I think, was their first product. Uh, but this light cone is, is obviously one of their most recent products. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're very happy to have been partnered uh, with V-flat World. Um, I had some, you know, great discussions. And it was really good that we were able to work with them um, and, and bring this product to market. Um, so, yeah, very, very happy to be, uh, be working with the guys at V-Flat World. Yes. And, and, and like I said, they did give you credit, Carl. They didn't steal it from you. They gave you, it, it, it is the Lightcone X, Carl Taylor. So you're on there. You're on, you, you I'm on there. Yeah. You're on, I'm there. on there. That's it. So we can't, we can't <laughs> forget about you. I, th I think, I think they probably just wanted to, to, to use my, 
uh, my infamousness as a product photographer for that reason. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, I get, I, I'm assuming it's working because it's it's doing great. Um, now, would you say that that same bit of advice would be something you would say is probably the most important thing to consider for those people who may watch this and are just thinking about embarking on their journey into product photography, would that kind of hold true the same advice of, of making? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, if we take a second, if I just go to my, my web page here, um, th th this is the sort of product stuff that I shoot. Anything from large scale motorbikes, cars, to uh, tiny little products like lipsticks and cosmetics. But you can see here, I'm still using gradient lighting, but with the gloss look at the same time. Now this was done with a large scrim and lots of mirrors to catch all the lighting on the edge of the lipstick. And then as you can see, it's sat in a set as well. And as I said before, it's about making sure the set doesn't overpower the product. The product still has to be the hero uh, in the whole thing. But it's the lighting that is absolutely crucial to the success of any product shot. Lighting, composition, all of those things work together um, to, you know, to create this desirable looking image. And whether you're shooting, you know, a, a large scale product like a car or whether you're shooting something small like a lipstick or, you know, cosmetics, etc. Lighting is always the key thing. And when we came to, to do, create this product, we, we tried to find a solution that was mostly for small product problems. Because the other thing for photographers in some ways, photographing jewellery is harder than photographing a car. I mean, yes, of course, if you're photographing a car, you need the space in a studio. But if you took a competent, a really high quality jewellery photographer who really knew his stuff about product photography, I can guarantee you he could also photograph or she could also photograph a car because the, the physics and the principles are the same. The difficulties with small product photography is you're dealing with small movements, you're dealing with tiny items, macro, depth of field, sometimes focus stacking, and it can even be harder to control your lighting because the smallest movement changes things dramatically. Um, and this is where most people str struggled with small product items, especially photographing things that they were selling themselves. And that's where the light cone sits. It sits for those small to medium sized products and making that job easier. Now, admittedly, it is mostly for flat lay stuff. That's where the product can lay down flat on a surface. But in saying that, we've got some photographers now using the light cone for photographing sort of pack shot items like cosmetic bottles, but they lay the cosmetic bottle on its back or at a slight angle and then still shoot with the light cone downwards. We have also experimented with using the light cone this way and actually shooting through it and putting it over the product where the product is on a vertical stand or like a pedestal with a little bit of a cutout and then you can bring the light cone over the product and in front of the product and then put your camera lens through there. That does actually work, but because the light cone has got a little bit of bend in it, you just have to maybe support it with a C stand and then you've got to position your light. So you can still use it in that way. Um, I saw V-flat, they've even used it to take a picture of a model and it was amazing the result they got with it. They put the model's face inside and then shot the model and she had this really beautiful gradient glow lighting in the eyes uh, that looked quite unique. So, you know, you can be as creative with this thing as you want. It's not a solve everything product. It will help a lot of photographers in a lot of instances. Excuse me, we got a, a storm blowing outside. Um, it'll, it'll solve a lot of problems for a lot of photographers in a lot of instances, especially for small to medium sized product photography. Um, but, you know, you can be creative with it as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, Marty's got a back-to-back -back here, so i hit you with these two questions. Uh, first off, what gels, colors do you find work best? Which ones do you tend to avoid or recommend avoiding? And then in terms of talking about sets, do you personally use a set designer or are you designing your own sets? Okay, so on the gel thing, uh, in most of my product photography, I don't use any gels at all because quite often for products, uh, for retail of those products and advertising for those products, they need to show them as they are or as close to they are in terms of a neutral balance. 
Occasionally for a special effect, I might put a colored gel in something, but I use that more in my fashion or beauty work than I do in, um, in any product work. Here's an example with a colored gel. So I introduced just a little hint of blue light there on the base of that, that watch strap there. But th this is quite rare that I do that. In this one, I did introduce a colored gel for the water surface from the lighting at the back and for a bit of a blue glow on the Tom Ford label, but the product itself is lit with neutral light. So I don't want to uh, create a, you know, a false impression of the product and make it look blue when it isn't blue because um, that, you, you can get pulled up for that in terms of um, what the art director wants. Um, the second question, sorry, Scott, just remind me on the second question. Uh, is, uh, do you particularly use a set designer or are you, or are you designing the set yourself? Okay, uh, so I design my own sets nearly all the time. If it's a very specific thing or a large set, so let's say we're doing uh, some sort of home interiors, furniture or something like that, or a set uh, like that, then set builders will come in to do that. But for small set stuff, I'm doing that myself or, or with my team in-house. The only exception to that is with food photography. I'm terrible with uh, the... The, the layout, if you like, of food and keeping food looking good. So I use food stylists for the food stuff, but for object stuff, uh, we do most of that ourselves. Awesome, wonderful. Well, now's an opportunity. You, you talked about the light cone. We talked about V-Flat, who obviously helped create this alongside with you. But talk a little bit about yourself. Where can people find your work? Where can people keep up with what you're doing? I know you mentioned uh, teaching some classes and things like that. How do people find out about all that? Okay, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now on here, this is my commercial website, which is Carl Taylor. That's Carl with a K, K-A-R-L-T-A-Y-L-O-R.com. So this is where you'll find all my fashion, beauty, product, commercial work here. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, we also have an education business called Visual Education, where we teach photography from product photography to lighting to fashion, beauty, even 3D, CGI, and filmmaking, and the business side. Very popular education platform. And we've got hundreds and hundreds of classes for uh, all different genres of photography. That's at visualeducation.com. Wonderful. If you can't remember that, then uh, maybe... Maybe it's not for you. No, just, just kidding. Carl Taylor, it's not that difficult, people. No, as long as you put the K. Right. Yeah. Carl with a K. Exactly. Yeah. No C's here. K's. Okay. Carl with a K. Yeah, Excellent. I've got I've got some German German heritage or Austrian heritage, so my name got spelt with a K. It's it's all right. I've I've got two T's in Scott. Some people think it's one. You know, to each their own, whatever you prefer. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. But Carl, I want to thank you for being here. A ton of great information. I love the product. If you're in the field, if you're looking for something to help out, I think this is great. Um, you can even walk around it like it. Uh, the free idea is still there. Walk around with it, with your, with your face in it, and you know it'll make you look better. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thanks, thanks to our hosts over at the Flat World as well for helping setting this up. That's all the time we have for you today. This has been another edition of the Bean virtual event space and we'll catch you next time this video is brought to you by squarespace from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Carl to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.